Hello and welcome to this critical care teaching video on the assessment of hypotension and shock. Today I'm going to introduce one very useful equation that will help you identify the cause of hypotension and shock and therefore inform your management of the patient. Mean arterial pressure is equal to the cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. Now we can expand that out slightly because we know that cardiac output is the product of heart rate and stroke volume. So this gives us the equation mean arterial pressure is equal to heart rate times stroke volume times systemic vascular resistance. Hypotension therefore is due to an abnormality with one or more of these components. In terms of finding the cause of hypotension for your patient, I encourage you to do the basics well. Thorough history and detailed examination will, in almost all cases, give you the cause of hypotension for your patient. There are some extra investigations though that may help you too. Now I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list of questions to ask when you take a history from patients, but things you might want to consider including in your history are any chest pain, palpitations, a past history of venous thromboembolism, trauma, infection, bee or wasp stings, and any significant underlying medical problems. When you're examining your patient then, the first thing you should be looking at is heart rate. Rhythm is also important as that will influence your treatment and therefore a 12 lead ECG really is a mandatory investigation when you're looking at a patient with hypotension. Bradycardia and tachycardia can both cause hypotension. Bradycardia has a very obvious effect on cardiac output and therefore blood pressure, but extremes of tachycardia can also do this by preventing the left ventricle from filling adequately and so lowering stroke volume. This is a particular problem in cases of new, very fast atrial fibrillation, because not only is there insufficient time for the left ventricle to fill, the left ventricle is not getting that atrial kick, that extra filling from atrial systole when the atria is fibrillating. Stroke volume now. History, signs and symptoms of recent myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolus, trauma and blood loss, burns and therefore fluid loss, along with severe diarrhea and vomiting, polyuria, anything to suggest cardiac tamponade and severe sepsis can all have an effect on stroke volume. In terms of systemic vascular resistance then, it's not actually possible to accurately measure it without additional equipment, but a good clinical examination is extremely important. Does your patient have warm peripheries and bounding pulses? They are almost certainly highly vasodilated. If they are cool and shut down and you're struggling to find peripheral pulses, this could be hypovolemia, it could be poor cardiac output, it could be very high systemic vascular resistance. There are extra investigations that I would encourage you to use. Bedside focused echocardiography is extremely useful in this setting. It will give you a ballpark idea of cardiac function, left ventricular filling, and it will also allow you to rule in or rule out a pericardial effusion. Cardiac output monitoring, most frequently something that takes the area under the curve of the arterial line trace, can also prove very useful in identifying the cause of hypotension in your patient. Hopefully, with this done, you will be able to identify the cause of shock for your patient. Most commonly in intensive care, we see septic and hypovolemic shock, and depending on where you work, perhaps neurogenic shock, cardiogenic, obstructive, and indeed anaphylactic shock as well. In summary then, We've looked at the equation for blood pressure and why detailed patient assessment is so important in identifying the cause of hypotension and shock in your patient. I would encourage you to go on and watch the second video on hypotension and shock where we're going to discuss some of the treatment options for these various factors that affect blood pressure. If you do have any questions or comments please leave them down below and I'll hope to see you on the next one.